Thanks. You know, it seemed all eyes were on P&G's Twin Towers downtown uh, during this proxy fight and their shareholder meeting on Tuesday, especially with this activist investor, Nelson Peltz, stepping in. He lost the seat on the board, at least the preliminary results say he did, but he says he's not going away and he's actually going to work with CEO David Taylor. Listen. They are doing the best they can given what they believe this company should be run like. Okay, we just have a different view of that. It's important, absolutely important, that we listen to different ideas from anywhere. p and is about being better. I don't pretend, neither does anybody within p and presume we have all the answers. All right, WCPO business reporter Dan Monk was with me at that shareholder meeting. Dan, you know, we both talked afterwards. You said this vote surprised you. Will you be surprised if these two, uh, the CEO, David Taylor, and Nelson Peltz actually do work together to make changes in Procter & Gamble? Uh, yeah, I'd be, I guess I'd be surprised if they worked together. I'm sure they're going to keep talking to each other, however, so, um, I mean, we'll have to see what comes from that. I think what's most likely to happen is that P&G will pursue the plan that it told shareholders it wanted to follow all along, and Peltz will continue to try to get them to consider other ideas, and um, if PNG results improve, everything goes away, pelts goes away, shareholders make money, everybody's happy. But if things don't improve, then pelts has more pressure, has more leverage. Uh, you said there are some hard feelings. It was the most expensive corporate election in U.S. history. Yeah. And there are hard feelings, even though they're kind of saying there, there weren't. Yeah, I mean, David Taylor made that point in the, in the press conference where he said that the, the media made more of this. Peltz versus Taylor rift uh, than really existed. But I, I know for a fact from talking to the folks on the Peltz side and P&G employees that they're, uh, they're, both sides accuse the other of uh, exaggerating things, using misinformation to get their points across. And I, I don't see that going away anytime soon. All right, Dan Monk's got a full analysis of what this means for Procter & Gamble. It's up right now on WCPO.com.